Look how packed this parking lot is. That's a good sign. That shows you that this is quality food. And who do we have sitting down there? How are you doing? What's happening, Tommy? You want to review this place or what? Yeah, Hello, how you doing? Some of the fans. Racha with the chucha, you know what I'm saying? I don't know Spanish. <laughs> This guy here, quality, quality, quality. And we're all the way here in the back. Wow, look at that, frosty, delectable delight. Now what have you got there, Tommy? I have a pina colada, delicious quality here. All right, hey, you ever heard that song? If you like pina coladas. Mm. Wow, I just want to take a second to talk about this drink right here, horchata. It is delicious, it is so sweet, and it is it has got this like cinnamony, vanilla type of flavor to it. It's absolutely delicious. This is fantastic. Now look at the big icy mug. This is amazing. Top quality, if you know what I mean. Fiesta, it's a pate. They've got a whole salsa bar here with tons of different kinds of salsa. They got the green salsa, the verde, they got the salsa rojo, mild, medium, hot, but the mocajete has got a smoky flavor to it. Mmm. Mmm. Chicken and beef with a lettuce and tomato, delicious. Top mm. rank. Amazing. The simplicity of the basic ingredients of the traditional taco is phenomenal. You got the grilled chicken, so you got that grilled flavor from the chicken. Onion, cilantro, and the corn tortilla. Good taste and quality. It's just amazing, it's delicious. Mm. Queso dip, you know, one thing that's great is I make what I, I like to call Mexican macaroni and cheese. It's really where you get a side of rice and then the side of the queso cheese dip Pour the queso all over the rice and stir it up, and it is to die for. The best comfort food on earth. And one thing I like to do is I like to break the shell and make it into kind of like a, a chip and kind of... Mm. Now that right there is the beauty of the taco salad. You can eat with a fork, or you can break off the shell and just eat the insides with the shell. Speaking of a fork, I've got to scoop some of this guacamole and put in my taco. There's so much guacamole here. If you had a party of six, seven, eight people eating here, you could get the table side guacamole. There'd be enough for everybody to go around. And the delightful part about it is today, for just me and Tommy, leftovers. That's one of my favorite parts about eating at a place where you get a big pile of food is that you got leftovers to take home. Amazing, it tastes delicious. Mm. The fresh squeezed lime juice, the fresh cilantro, Delicious, oh my gosh. And I'm still munching down on this taco salad. Delicious, amazing. Mmm. I got it loaded down with the table side guacamole for the food dip review crew. Feliz guacamole. Feliz guacamole. Feliz guacamole. Down at Ole's, it makes me happy. Wow! They have a lengthy dessert menu here, folks. They've got flan, they've got bunuelas, sopapillas, el volcan, which is vanilla ice cream topped with mini churros and caramel. They've got fried ice cream, el tahin. They've got root beer float. You can just get two scoops of vanilla ice cream if you so desire. Olay's banana split, which is a Mexican banana split made with fried plantains. And they've also got a cheesecake chimichanga. Deep fried cheesecake chimichanga, that is. And they also have Spanish churros. So there's so much to choose from there that you gotta save room for, for dessert. And don't say, well, we gotta save room for dessert, let's not get an appetizer or let's get a small meal. because. This is all about leftovers. You want to take leftovers home so you can eat tomorrow, too. Mm -hmm. 
So hey folks, we're back here again and we're with our dessert segment. I got the fried ice cream banana split. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Mmm. Very crunchy, very delicious. Very is, it, is it still hot from being fried? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. So you have a, a good balance of hot and cold and then a balance of creamy and crispy and crunchy. That sounds like a fantastic dessert, man. You know, with this deep fried cheesecake chimichanga, it's actually got a great balance of cold and hot, creamy and crunchy crunchy and crispy at the same time because the cheesecake inside is actually cold and dense cool it's very delicious a little rich and uh, not too sweet and then the outside is crispy crunchy hot and then it has cinnamon sugar and honey or caramel or something sweet on top of it I don't even I'm lost in just good flavor here you know if you're here with another person on a date or something like that or just hanging out with a friend and you feel like you're a little too full for dessert get something like this and you can split it I know the sopapillas are that way as well you know it comes with multiple small pieces and you can share it with another person delicious well Tommy what do you think about all in all Ole's guacamole's amazing I have to say awesome establishment the owner is awesome. Yeah, you can find Olay working here, you know, to this day. This restaurant was opened, uh, what, 2007? You can still find the owner, Olay, yeah. in here working, greeting customers, seating customers, and working. And um, there's just a, a really nice balance of foods on the menu that reflect a culmination of the handed down traditional recipes from his parents and also a reflection of the fine dining scene in Los Angeles where Ole started working when he was young. Ole is from originally Zacatecas, Mexico. His wife is from Los Angeles. This is truly a mom and pops restaurant. You've got a husband and wife truly. and even their sons work here as well. <laughs> The one thing about it is, always guacamole brings a particular sensation to Mexican food and yes. fine dining, Mexican dining. It's like an extra vibrancy. Yes, extra. It's extra quality, extra party kind of feeling. You know, you just very don't festive leave. atmosphere. Yeah, no, this is a great place you could hang out all day and all night. Yep. So, folks, the food we bought becomes your food for thought. for any occasion. Always guacamoles. Let them do the work. What is inside of that piñata? He looks awfully suspicious. So folks, I was looking at this picture. So this is me, and that's the big guy back here. Is you? No, this is me right oh, here. This guy, and that's Hamza. <laughs> yeah, so that's me and Hamza, the food dude. Very <laughs> dapper man, I see right here with the tie on, and a fedora hat. It even looks like. Yes, look at that handsome man. I don't know who he is, but that's me, and that's Hamza. That's awesome.
everybody. So, Holmes, you know something interesting about bananas? What's that? The king of rock and roll originally used to eat um, peanut butter and banana sandwiches. And also, mm. he once had a private meeting with President Nixon to be a federal officer in the war on, in the war on Korea. You know that? Who? Nixon and Elvis. Had a oh, Elvis, up. you're talking about Elvis, the king of rock and roll. Yeah, he actually came here in Asheville, you know, to get a tooth pulled. There's a book on the king of rock and roll getting his tooth pulled. Right here in Western North Carolina, he came here to get his tooth pulled. Yep. You know why he was angry? Why? He had all those teeth and no toothbrush. <laughs> That's what my mama said. <laughs> you mean alligators? Why are alligators so ornery? Medulla oblongata. <laughs> mm. Tommy, what is the Mexican word for heaven? Tatotus metasazistas. Man, that sounds Ukrainian. <laughs> you speaking slang to me. Whatever the Mexican word is for heaven, man, that's where I'm at right now. El Nino. Now here, when we eat at Mexican restaurants, I'm El Perro, and this is El Burro. El Burro and El Perro. Just kind of nicknames. <laughs> What's that book to me? El Perro means the dog. I'm the money dog. El Perro. What am I? You're El Burro. What does that mean? Somebody leave it in the chat if it's a real word in Spanish. Uh, Leave it in the chat. I'm assuming it means the big dog, the bulldog. If it means something mean, I'm jumping over this table. <laughs> Somebody leave it in the comments. El burro. Two R's, I think. Are you calling me a bull? That's what, actually, when I worked at a really busy restaurant as a dishwasher, uh, me and some of the other dishwashers, uh, those guys were Mexican, but me and some of those other guys, we called each other way. I think it's B-U-E-Y, you know, yo, yes, boy, hey, boy, will you do that for me, boy? Like, hey, thanks for the help, boy. And that meant bull. That's what you would call the workers as it's like a, a compliment, a term of endearment between the workers because you're working like a bull. You know what I mean? Yeah. And plus, how much you have to work, it's bull crap. <laughs>